Hi everyone and welcome to this session, Sustainability and OpenStreetMap for Development with Erica Hagen. Um, really interesting session um, built from a discussion two years ago at State of the Map in Milan. Uh, for anyone who was there or participated in that discussion, um, you're about to hear um, some outcomes from that that have been two years in the making. Um, so really looking forward um, to hearing more. Um, in the talk, uh, if you've not participated um, in other sessions before, I'm just going to recap. If you go on the website to the program and you click on this session, um, on the left-hand side, um, there's a link which says um, session pad, um, and you can type in any questions you have for Erica um, into that pad. Um, so if you've got questions as we go along, please write them in there, and then at the end, I'm going to um, walk through them um, with Erica. Um, and um, that's how we run things. Um, so anything that you need to ask me um, in the in the meantime, um, just type that in the pad as well if you're having any issues. Um, and I'm going to pass over to Erica uh, to kick off um, with this session, um, Sustainability and OSM for Development. Thanks. Hi, my name is Erica Hagen, and I will be talking to you about some uh, work that I've been doing on sustainability issues in OpenStreetMap with Open Cities Africa, um, part of the World Bank. So uh, two years ago at State of the Map in Milan, uh, actually, we organized a panel about this topic. So um, myself and uh, several colleagues held a panel about sustainability challenges that were common to working in OpenStreetMap in developing countries, um, particularly. Mappers spoke up about struggles continuing to map, keeping maps up to date, growing their communities in places with uh, very few resources. Um, and this research um, has now concluded with a white paper on the topic um, sustainability and open street map under the open DRI um, section of the World Bank. So, um, yeah, so in this talk, I would like to share some about those findings and also um, some ways that we can support a more, a stronger international mapper ecosystem. So first I'd like to introduce this by um, saying that, you know, I think we all need to acknowledge that OpenStreetMap is no longer and hasn't been for a while really um, primarily just a Western European or US centric um, endeavor anymore. Um, but that said, traditionally, we also should all be aware as mappers that maps have been tools of power over ways to claim territory, ways to hold power. And um, so OpenStreetMap, of course, is so important to many of us because of that very potential to um, reverse this, to make it possible for everyone to map. Um, and this is a super important thing to just preface with, I feel, in Africa, and here we are in uh, virtual Cape Town, um, where, as we know, maps were one of the key tools that were used to conquer and colonize and slice up um, the territory by European powers when they were uh, decided to claim the territory of Africa amongst themselves and it had been obviously mapped very differently prior to that moment. Um, and let's not also forget that that endeavor itself was chiefly economic so um, in nature. So economic forces at play in developing countries should really, in terms of geography and mapping itself, should be considered in this context as well. Um, and sustainability of mapping by people that live in um, not just Africa, but developing and emerging economies um, should really be first and foremost. So in order to achieve this potential for everyone who wants to, to be able to belong to the OpenStreetMap community and be, take ownership over this project themselves um, and not to kind of reproduce power imbalances and that already exist in our world, but to kind of create something better um, we really need to support those local communities and mappers. But how to do so is not really all that clear a lot of the time. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I feel that we need to look at that a little more, more closely. And that's what inspired a lot of this sustainability um, 
work. So um, I wanted to look more closely at sustainability in places like where I've worked for 10 years mapping, which is Kenya, um, with Map Kibera. Um, my partner Mikkel and I started Map Kibera and almost immediately saw that there was like a lot of interest, a lot of need for mapping, and the citizens were really excited about it and the potential to create their own maps um, and use them for, for change. And um, so increasingly this kind of access issue by less privileged mappers became a real passion of mine, seeing that um, the typical way that things work with maps and data in um, places like Kenya is that those they are created about uh, people living in poverty. They are not created by them, typically. They are not given access. So governments create maps, but so do NGOs and international agencies trying to provide aid. Um, and just everyone is, or researchers is another category that's, that's often creating data and maps um, without sharing it. So um, it was just really striking I think to me, working in Kibera in particular, an informal settlement, how much research and data and maps really were gathered about people without their knowledge and approval, or maybe with a little bit of knowledge, but certainly without any chance to access the results or to much less help use them to make their own choices or to improve policies that affected them very, very, very personally. So there's still this mentality of we know what's best for you. We, the government, we, the NGOs, we, the external, you know, the foreigners that come in to, to help know better. Um, and w w you don't get to decide what's, what's best for you. Um, we have the data. We get to decide. So having this ability to map an open street map was really um, potentially a piece of that puzzle, um, trying to shift that mentality and shift that kind of um, assumption really that people don't want to take part in highly technical projects, um, which is definitely not the case. So, well, so bringing this back to sustainability, um, was, we might have seen these kind of needs, but the, the potential to sustain the mapping was really difficult to achieve. And um, starting with training people, there was, you know, supporting capacity or just trying to solve this puzzle of how to sustain um, some, well, what we hoped would be some really impactful stuff. So um, I guess from here came a lot of, you know, looking for grants and contracts and different kind of ways that mapping could be sustained in very poor area. So of course, in a lot of places, there's, it's a really a pure volunteerism kind of model. And that can arise in uh, developing countries and emerging economies as well, but um, it's not necessarily going to provide opportunities for um, those who can't simply can't afford to, to spend time on voluntary activities. Um, so, I guess something that you realize as you start this OpenStreetMap journey is that there's always more to map, and even in one small place, there is going to be layer upon layer of things that can be captured, things that change, things that still need to be mapped. Um, there's always improvements to do. So, you know, what does it require to keep that moving forward? From here, I started to work on this research to do the, the white paper and um, let me lead into what I actually uh, developed with that. Um, so first of all, defining sustainability. So the first thing that we tried to do was figure out, well, how do we define this kind of amorphous term, which has kind of a generic application, which also references in, in, in environmental sustainability, came up with this idea of sustainability, sustained benefits. So say like you do some mapping project of some kind, what are the benefits that you were hoping to get out of it and how can they be made more long-term so that it doesn't just kind of drop off. Um, and this can, itself can have a lot of aspects. So then we, I further broke it down into these dimensions, financial, economic, cultural, social, technological, and political institutional. So I'll go into those a little more shortly, but um, 
you know, thinking of sustainability beyond just um, economic, first of all, which is the top thing that people think about usually, um, and beyond, um, you know, just can my organization survive? Can my personal work survive? But like, what are the benefits um, kind of divorced from individuals and, and, and organizations, but what are the actual benefits we want? So then I wanted to look at, you know, in terms of achieving these particular benefits and sustaining them, who's involved um, in developing an emerging economy setting and countries, we might have these kinds of groups, small NGOs, we might have individuals and consultants. You can think about how this matches with your country, which have whatever kind of country you happen to live in, but do you see all of these or not? Individuals serving larger NGOs or consultant as consultants in the aid sector or for government, um, university groups and student groups like youth mappers, international NGOs, large agencies um, might be present, local startups and companies creating apps using OSM, for example, um, chapters and networks, um, OSM chapters being much less commonly formally recognized um, in developing countries, but hopefully that's changing. Um, government-led and internal to government mappers um, and individuals. And I'd like to mention there's definitely sort of a tension between the loose, flat structure of OSM generally and this kind of network structure and the voluntary nature of global mapping and the demands of specific mapping needs tied to things like World Bank projects. So, you know, you might have a massive World Bank project in a country um, to the tune of like millions of dollars, infrastructure projects, say, involving roads or dams, electricity, things like this. Um, they might need a specific map. Um, and then you have this kind of volunteer community. So this tension is really interesting to me. Um, and we don't need to pretend that it's not there, <laughs> basically. As I was trying to do this work, I uh, interviewed a number of people um, for case studies. So let's see. In quite a number of countries, I wanted to see like really what were their sustainability challenges by country, like in context, because they are quite different. So um, one of the first I looked to was um, Bangladesh. Bangladesh having, this is OpenStreetMap Bangladesh Foundation, which was just starting out when I did that interview. And so what I discovered was in, in that country, they really have quite robust uh, open street map mapping communities, quite um, lots and lots of students have been involved. Lots of org NGOs and aid organizations have worked with open street map there, including the World Bank's open cities, um, including the Red Cross, um, just Pretty much every NGO, international NGO that you can think of has probably worked there um, with OSM in some way, shape, or form. So they had a really good start. Um, I was interested in the format that that took. It seemed like at the beginning there was quite a lot of work with like getting volunteers out of universities, student volunteers, um, led by consultants. So individual mappers that would be consultants to those eight organizations primarily, um, would organize things with student mappers at the universities that they knew and train young people. So that's sort of a model that was used. Um, as far as sustainability, what have been their challenges? Okay. So um, keeping those student volunteers engaged, supported, and adequately trained has been a challenge requiring funding. So this is in the financial kind of economic challenge area. Turnover is very common due to this lack of financial resources. Um, a lot of kind of retraining is needed if you're going to rely on the students um, and volunteers a lot. Um, also, there's a issue in the country with sort of brain drain, so the, the brightest graduates might, might leave the country often. Um, technological challenges, many times they create data. This is along the lines of data quality, requiring kind of um, checking the data, cleaning it up, just a lot of um, also multiple concurrent large projects across the country. So a lot of data management issues. Um, social cultural challenges were, there were quite a few. Um, competition amongst many projects and independent consultants can be a challenge to overcome. The 
foundation wanting to, um, this Bangladesh OSM foundation hoping to kind of coordinate those. So it's an interesting model to see if it works for that country too, and maybe for other countries to kind of try to coordinate, but not really like dominate the OSM projects. So people might undertake them independently, separately, but having some kind of group um, way to network together and coordinate better um, became important. So overall, we found these kind of like categories of, of challenges um, under each of those headings that I mentioned previously, financial, social, technological, political. So um, I'll just go through those really fast then. Um, financial being lack of consistent funding, of course, that's sort of a top sustainability challenge. Tricky issues around volunteerism and careers and livelihoods um, and the needs of people living in different levels of poverty. So then there's also like an internal challenge where some are sort of professional professional GIS, you know, graduates, um, others are community volunteers. Um, there's a lot of, if you want to provide access to everyone, how do you kind of, um, I guess, be fair to, to the needs as well as the backgrounds of every of everyone involved. Um, leadership capacity being perhaps a challenge as well for financial, um, accessing financial resources. Failure of the commons, just that um, things aren't getting done that aren't, that are maybe beneficial to everyone, but not specifically to anyone. So these kind of base mapping functions or data quality checks or making sure that there's sort of an even map, that's, that's like a commons task. Key cha challenges under social and cultural competition amongst individual mappers or, group, or mapping groups that can ultimately be sometimes detrimental if they're all trying to work ultimately towards the same goal human resource, capital and capacity, and social equity and access that has to do with, you know, are you only working with the elites of the country? Um, what kind of penetration to rural areas do you have in terms of training mappers and so forth and data access as well? Technological, we have data quality issues and longevity issues, of course, um, capacity challenges in general, but also hardware and software choices whether you know projects are being done with overly expensive or complicated equipment um, that can't be kind of easily or maybe it's even subject to theft in country being too valuable basically appropriate technology and appropriate software that can be understood and kept up to date and then politically and institutionally there's um, integrating osm into these institutions um, having still barriers to open data as a concept um, unstable political environment. There's so many things that could go under here. But I wanted to get into sort of what what do we do about it <laughs> before we run out of time. Um, building the ecosystem. So um, that has been kind of the main tactic that I've come out, come out of this with is, you know, in any given country or region even, we really need to have that kind of human infrastructure also need to lobby for open data in the government level also building osm among ngos use also recruiting data contributors um you know those who already have data to share it convincing private clients encouraging community and social good so what does a healthy ecosystem look like basically it looks like it has all of these um the human infrastructure can't really be underestimated like what kinds of groups and trainings and networks do you have do you only have um you know a local kind of pseudo chapter like a in kenya we have osm kenya but it's not like a formalized chapter but that's kind of what exists in a lot of places or do you also, or do you only have a couple of youth mappers groups? Do you have consultants only? Um, how much, how, what's the mix of players that you have and how can they be kind of better balanced or what's missing to keep a sustainability of um, OSM in the country and increase it? Um, so looking for ideal organizational structures. So like, you know, the way that 
Bangladesh was doing or DRC was trying to do, like, are these models to copy for your particular region or country? Or are these, um, is there a better way of doing things, you know? What does each context might need something different, um, but perhaps there's there are things to learn here from what they've tried to do. Um, planning for data longevity, looking ahead, like, well, if you create this map today, but everything's going to be different next year, who's going to update it? Um, social sustainability means increasing, widening opportunities. So really looking for equity and participation, um, not just kind of keeping all of the opportunities in one group only. That's a very difficult thing to, to do without kind of a network or a larger um, group of some sort that's going to look out for the greater good um, of, of mapping basically in the country. Systems for reliability, just to um, improve reliability of data. Like, what do we do if somebody comes in and does a bunch of bad edits, you know? Who's, who's kind of checking on that? And this is not things that, inter there can also be international people trying to do helpful things, but creating some bad data on accident. So, you know, who's kind of looking out for reliability? Um, working with government at all levels, not just national, but looking at local. Um, just looking specifically at what program planners and funders can do, external actors. Um, please resource the nuts and bolts of open data, base mapping, data refresh. I mean, these are kind of things that uh, in all kinds of open source projects, there is a lack of resource for. Like there's things that just go don't, go, don't get done. Um, in OSM, I'm seeing that happen as well. And it's, it would be really helpful to have kind of funding for that stuff. Um, incorporating universities more into ecosystems. Sometimes they kind of operate very outside of the, the rest of the OSM world or um, like graduates aren't automatically kind of placed in, into the OSM, I guess, community um, and how it's functioning. So just bringing together those ecos those academic and maybe NGO and individual mapper volunteer kind of ecosystems. Supporting champions, uh, analyzing incentive structures accurately. Well, that's always very <laughs> much easier said than done, but I would like to bold that one. Um, and then just capacity building and supporting local mappers. That's really what it comes down to, like looking at who's doing stuff, not um, kind of being inclusive as possible. For smaller organizations and for national OSM communities, being specific about the core benefits that will be prioritized by different groups and projects. So, you know, what is it that we want the projects to do? Um, having a plan. <laughs> Considering how competition could be more productive or, you know, where we want to encourage it, where we want to have collaborative decision making. Considering forming a chapter or a local network and looking really carefully at data quality. So just a few things. There's so much more that could be discussed here. So please do reach out to me. This is one of my, my OSM and Twitter handle, my um, email. And um, yeah, I hope you have something to contribute in the, in the questions. Great. Um, so thanks so much, Erica, for that really engaging talk. Um, I can see a bunch of questions have come through on the pad. Um, so just quickly, for anyone who's participating in the session who doesn't know um, what a pad is or where to find it, um, if on the program you click on the name of this session, um, then you can see a link to the pad on the left-hand side, and you can see other people's questions and um, type in your own as well. Um, so now I'm just going to um, coordinate a few of the questions that have come up with Erica. Um, we have about 10, 15 minutes, um, so uh, a few to go through. Um, so the first one um, then, Erica, um, to ask is going to be um, around, um, do you think that the companies who are working in OpenStreetMap can be helping local communities um, to map sustainably? Uh, I mean, I think there's a role to play for, for everyone. So that's kind of, I guess that's the idea of this kind of 
ecosystem way of thinking about it. Like what are all of, what's the proper role for those companies? So I don't know if by companies that person meant a local company. I mean, company means a lot of things. could be any size. Um, if you're thinking like an international company, um, there's definitely, I, I mean, I've seen, I've seen it happen where there was kind of a focus on like, well, let's, we want to work on maps in a particular place and let's support uh, local mappers and work jointly. Um, there's, there's also, there's kind of like a view that a company could take that, you know, they might need data for something, um, but they also want to support those local communities. And I, I think that that's definitely possible. But again, it takes like that leadership from someone inside the company to to want to do that. Um, sometimes that's come out of like a more like a foundation within the company, you know, more of a charitable side of that company. But a lot of times now it's just like they need data or they want maps to be more complete. Um, I kind of wish that some of them would take more time with this aspect and like actually look at what's there and how they can be more supportive. I think there's like a long way to go. Um, as for local companies, I think that that's like a great, um, you know, especially if there's a local company that wants to use mapping, looking at the OpenStreetMap community. I mean, we've developed some some work locally in Kenya where um, there's there's definitely a lot of potential in that area where there's say like a local company that works on um, transportation or something that uses a map. There's so many ways that they can integrate with that local OSM community and um, help it be more sustainable. But I don't think that any either of these two potential areas of growth are like just beginning. So there's like a long way to go in in most countries. I think that there's some that have kind of gotten further along. Um, but yeah, huge role to play, really. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Um, thanks for that. Um, so now a couple of questions have come in. Um, one of them from um, transport for Cairo in Egypt. Um, so they're asking um, that they are an example of a consultancy working with and contributing to OSM in a country um, where they have not identified um, a an OSM community. Um, so a company working mm. in OSM but without necessarily a community link. Um, what do you think the relevant authority is um, to allow uh, different contributors and stakeholders um, to work together in a given country or city? Well, that's a good question. I think in a lot of countries, there will be some kind of a group that's called, um, for instance, we created a, a bunch of mappers in Kenya, created OSM Kenya together, um, which is kind of a loose umbrella group. It's not really, it's not even formally a chapter or anything but there could be and so I don't know somebody else can probably chime in on the pad actually if there's that group in Egypt um, something like it and so that wouldn't be necessarily an authority but it would allow people to work collaboratively so I think it's what they're looking for now if there isn't such a thing or you don't feel that that's really the right body to work with um, I know that you know there's a on whatsapp there's OSM Africa chat that you can always ask questions i think that there's there's ways to find out but um that is kind of what i think we would aim to have everywhere if possible in some way shape or form but yeah i can't answer too specifically about egypt and i hope somebody else can um chime in there yeah that's a good point if anyone else on the group knows about um egypt you can also type in some some info um on the pad um, so then I'm going to move on then to the next question, um, which is coming from Guy. Um, and Guy is asking, um, what impact do you see COVID-19 having on the sustainability of OSM mapping? Um, so I think this might be the first time I've heard COVID today, which is very unlike every other conference yeah. that I've joined in the last few months. So actually a bit of a refreshing break up till now, uh, but bring us back um, to the COVID situation. Do you see people returning to OSM after leaving? Like, for example, if they're in a particular circumstance right now, which means it's hard to contribute, um, like, economically, and could they kind of return to OSM um, at a future point? 
That's a good question. I hadn't really considered. I mean, there is an issue around sustainability of mapping that's quite obvious where, you know, if you have field mapping projects lined up, they are now probably on hold or being rethought. Um, so in that sense, the COVID-19 is definitely impacting. Um, or, or, for example, you know, you had something lined up to map, but now the whole point of mapping it is kind of not the top priority anymore. So now you're going to push it back by a year or something like that. So I think it's, it is having a huge impact. Um, as far as people being able to like, participate in mapping, that's, I'm not, I guess I'm not sure if that's going to, to show up. I think it depends on exactly how they're participating. So obviously, if a mapping project they were going to take part in is gone, then they won't participate. Will they come back later? Probably if that project comes back. Um, but if they, you know, are just having a lot of financial difficulties, it's definitely had like it's yeah, this huge imp economic impact, then maybe they're not going to be able to take part again. So it'll be interesting thing to track is like the, I guess you could track the, the mappers and like their edits over time and see if COVID has had an impact. So that would be kind of a cool uh, research project down the road. Um, yeah. It would, because there was that blog um, earlier this week as well, which showed that actually OSM was like breaking records with number of daily editors, which I realized like there's a lot to break down there in terms of who are the editors and where they are, but actually showing that during COVID mapping had actually gone up in many locations, which is kind of an interesting counter, I guess, to... Right. So that, and I mean, like in Kenya, we're working on COVID specific mapping. So there's actually probably a lot of people are we're looking to increase the coverage of the health, like health sector maps and health sites and doing a bunch of mapping of the COVID cases and things like that. So maybe there's actually been this growth in that aspect, but it would be interesting to see the locations of that, as you said, so the, the locations of those mappers. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks, Guy, for keeping us keeping us current. Um, so I am um, going to move back up to. So there's a statement added in here. Um, I'm not really sure if it's a question, um, but it just says map or be mapped. I don't know if you want to respond quickly to that or shall I move on to another question? <laughs> if you don't map, you may be mapped. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if that was a quote that I uh, maybe that was included. In there somewhere but it's um i think i remember that coming up kind of towards the beginning like it was tied into i i thought it was tied into this kind of always being more to math idea um and there being like different layers um and creating that kind of map for yourself um but yeah i i don't know what else to say about that actually but it's possible well, it does that, link you know, us. if you don't it does map. link us to yeah, another question, which is, there's another question just above that, which says, always more to map. Um, how did you go about defining what is sustainability for data, not just for community? Right. Yeah. So um, as I kind of try to detail, there's different types of sustainability in one. I kind of lumped data and technology together. Um, but data sustainability is is huge. I mean you know you look you look at the map and you kind of don't obviously see sorry if there's some fireworks going off right next to my, <laughs> my house here um you don't necessarily see uh the dates of when each map edit was made so you might say that you have like a map of water points or schools but what you might actually have is like 10 year 10 years old or five years old and therefore not that useful um so i guess i to find it as like, how do you keep things up to date? How do you keep the map up to date? And if you don't have, you know, if you put a lot of effort and energy and money into creating a very accurate picture of the moment, but you don't have any way to um, look at it a couple years down the road. I mean, this is a huge project for, or a huge problem for maps in the sort of traditional mapping sector in government. For example, like they have to keep surveying, um, when things change and it can be a huge sustainability issue, at, at least I've seen in like data that's being used in develop in development. Um, so I think OSM presents opportunities for that, but you have to think 
about what those are. So like training local mappers is obviously can help in that sustainability. You can call on people to continue to update data and with your local OSM chapter or community, you can make targets for that um, and check on the dates and how old data is and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's a key piece of sustainability. Perfect. Well, um, yeah, happy uh, happy holidays. I'm glad you clarified that was fireworks. I was kind of feeling a little alarmed for a minute there. Um, but um, yeah, happy holidays happy in the US. July. Also wishing you wishing you happy happy holidays. Happy Independence Day. Yeah. Um, so um, there's a couple of um, kind of comments in relation to the the questions from earlier. So just given that we have time, I'm going to whiz through those. Um, if people have other questions, feel free to add them in at the bottom. The the rainbow colors are getting a bit much for me to be able to read right now. Um, so there's mm -hmm. a question around which local companies in Kenya have you worked with, if any? I know you guys have had a lot of partners in Kenya, but just wondering if any of those are um, local based companies. Um, I mean, what springs to mind is Ushahidi, but I think they are formally not. Actually, I think they're formally an NGO. Um, that's a, a company that we're working with right now. But um, let me think. We've we've put together plans with uh, what I consider kind of more traditional companies. Like a lot of times, we've done sort of work with the aid sector and the the development sector. Um, but there will be um, companies that are, say, they're trying to create like a mobile app that requires a map or something like that. But those have been more like brainstorming sessions. I think um, we recently developed a, sort of a plan with a company that does motorbike delivery um, into and was interested in doing that kind of work in slums. And since we have these uh, kind of network and uh, maps, that's like a that's a type of partner that we've been trying to work with for a while. Developing, we've found that developing the business plans and having these kind of sessions of discussion have been um, getting more easier over the years. Like more recently, it's like the business sector has become more tech, technology oriented and more geotech oriented than it was before. So before it would be more like an international company, more likely. Um, so I think it's a matter of time, but it's, yeah, we, I can't say that we've actually actualized. I wish that, uh, my colleagues were on this chat. So they could probably remind me of something though, <laughs> that I'm forgetting. Uh, great. Um, okay. So I can see here there's a couple of responses to the discussion we were having earlier about, um, whether kind of contributions to OSM were changing with COVID and if so, for who? Um, just a couple of comments here I'm going to um, just read out so everyone's aware of them, which was um, just someone saying kind of, you know, is that an opportunity or a threat that um, people are mapping more or less? Um, and then um, someone else kind of commenting on about general sort of situation in economic situation, if people are things like furloughed, um, et cetera, then maybe they're mapping more. Um, but really just some comments there, no further questions mentioned. Um, so I think with that, let's wrap up. I don't know, Eric, if there was any sort of final statement or sort of place people can get in touch with you that you wanted to mention. Yeah, well, I hope that there's, I mean, I guess I can put my email address on the pad for people um, to get in touch that way. If you, I can also put a link to the actual paper, which is, um, yeah, might be of interest to some people to actually read through. Um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, I would love to have a bigger discussion about this. I think it's like a huge issue and multi-layered, especially when you bring in sort of the economics of mapping. Um, it's, it's challenging to sort out all of the pieces. Um, I was reminded recently in a discussion with someone about, about ethics and mapping, which I'm also working on and very interested in, that, you know, the the default and also from some of the talks earlier today that like the default of OSM typically, no matter whether they're using advanced technologies or not, is to really defer to local communities needs and, you know, what they want. But um, I think, you know, 
it's hard for people that don't, you know, it's hard to do, go below the surface and see, well, what, what is actually going on in each country and what do they really, when you say like defer to the needs or the demands or what the people want, it's like what you're talking about a whole country. <laughs> so like, which, you know, what's the, who's going to speak for that country um, or even just one community within that country is difficult. Um, so these are kind of, I don't know. I think these are interesting things to, to keep discussing. Um, I don't know if there's going to be an opportunity to have a, if this was a live conference, I would say let's gather afterwards and birds of a feather session to talk more about it. So um, maybe if there's interest, I will set something up for tomorrow. Great. Great. Okay. Um, so fabulous. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks for all the, the questions and the to and fro in, in the pad. That was uh, really nice to see.